Hey guys, how are you doing? Hope everything is good. Let me just turn this music off. That you probably can't hear it. I can hear it. Guys, welcome to the show. I am super excited about this conversation because it's gonna help all of us. And this is episode number 39. Let me get my show notes. I've actually printed it out this time. I don't I don't have like this big book of like notes all over the place. And usually it's like scribbling. Like if you look, look, let me just show you so I can be honest with you. Like here is my notes when I'm starting a show and it's like all over the place. Like, ah, like, and today I was like, you know what? I'm going to be organized and I'm going to talk about things that keep me organized and keep me planned. Cause this is what business is about. Like our list that we go through every single day. And guys, I can now see all the live comments in the platform, platform I'm using. So I'm excited about that. Um, let me turn this volume up. Ah. All right. All right. So this is episode number 39, hotel sales strategies and how you can get business right now. Guys, comment and let me know where you're listening from and where you're watching from and what your favorite hotel tactic or sales strategy is right now that you're using to try to get business in and you're really trying to do a little bit of everything. Today, we're going to show you exactly what you could do to be successful when your hotel is opening back up, ramping back up, your city might be ramping back up, which is pretty exciting, and that we all kind of work on this together. So, all right, uh, today you're gonna learn which travel segment uh, is needed right now, which travel segment the, you know that are that is looking, is traveling right now, right? Discover how to properly write a sales email that we all, you know, we write those emails that you never get responses back from, our special guest, our featured guest is going to show us exactly how to write an awesome email that gets a response, right? And then also get sales strategies that's going to help your career grow because not only if you're, let's say, all right, let's say if you're uh, furloughed right now, these strategies that we're going to share with you could help you in your next um, interview or your next job here in the next couple months, right? I love that too. So it's not just somebody that's actually working at a hotel, but these are tips and strategies for all of us. Hotel managers, owners, sales directors, your, your upcoming sales manager or your upcoming DOS. I love all of these strategies. And guys, by the way, we're giving away, our featured guest is giving away five copies during the show of her book. And it's all about sales. It's all about uh, the strategy on how to get business at your hotel. And I'm super excited about that. Guys, this episode, let me bring up the episode, it is sponsored by... My company, smartguests.com, it's a uh, website that you can get creative tools on, operations, op, um, uh, customer service, uh, sales and marketing. It's a little bit of everything. Hit up smartguests.com and get some creative tools that can help your business, your hotel grow. Uh, there's simple things as the customized candy bar template that can help you inspire and welcome people, welcome guests to your hotel. And there's a lot of creative stuff that we've created there. So go to smartguests.com. And secondly, the other sponsor is my website that's coming up here soon, and it's going to be a hospitality-inspired uh, courses, uh, a bunch, of, a, a lot of stuff, right? It's courses. It's going to be uh, God, I can't even think right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm like losing my uh, focus right now. But it, it's it's going to be an awesome uh, website where we're going to have a lot of resources for yourself, training, um, a bunch of mentorship programs, a bunch of leadership programs, which I'm super excited that I've been doing the last couple of weeks for a bunch of people all over the world. So I'm excited to bring this to you. It's a membership site. So if you wanna uh, lo know when the we launch or when I launch, go to rupesh.co, enter your name and your email address and I'll send you a message as soon as we launch. So I'm excited about that. All right, guys, I am going to, and let me see, there's a bunch of comments all, let me see where you guys are coming from. All right, uh, we have Denver, we have Maryland, Chicago, Omaha. Qatar, wow, uh, Virginia, you guys are all over the place. Guys, welcome to the show. If this is your first time, let us know if this is your first time here, newbie, because there's a lot of people that said, listen, I'm excited about our featured guest and this this topic, and they're like, I've never listened to your show, and I'm, I'm gonna jump on. So guys, welcome. If you're brand new, welcome to the show. We do this every Wednesday, and it's just been fun connecting with a bunch of people. I see people from Sh Sri Lanka, Kansas City, Guys, welcome. Comment where you're listening from. The most engaged person during this show is going to be chosen. So the five people that are most engaging, and I'm going to be reading the comments over here and looking all over the place to see who's been engaging. Uh, they're going to be picked. They're going to be chosen to win her free or win her book. All right. So our featured guest, 
is Tammy Gillis. She's the CEO and founder of Gillis Sales, who has over 25 years of hotel sales uh, experience. Her entrepreneur drive led her to develop a sales for hire program for hotels operating without sales. So if you don't have a sales team, guess what? You're not alone. Her, her hotel or her uh, company can help you. She's trained thousands of sales professionals, hotel owners, general managers, and frontline associates. Believing that sales are the lifeblood of all organization, her mission is to make sales accessible and achievable for all hotel owners, operators, guys. Let's just bring her on because I'm excited. Tammy, welcome to the show. Hey, good morning. I love your energy, Rupesh. Good morning and thank you so much. Congratulations on episode 39. I'm excited. It's the coffee. That's lots that's, of that's coffee. <laughs> yeah, I, I. That's my. That's my drink of choice as well. Actually, it's 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 just the it's just life. Actually, for me, I I've been like this since I was like six years old. Right. I get up early in the morning and I'm just excited about having fun because that's my number one thing. I want to have fun. Right. And I want to do things I really enjoy. And so I'm excited about this conversation. It shows. Well, you know, we, you were on a few uh, like a month ago or a month and a half ago, and you're. You know, in a panel, but I was like, you know what? A lot of people said, I you need to bring Tammy on and bring her on to share her insights and really feature her because you have this great experience and you connect with thousands of hoteliers and teach them and you see what's going on right now uh, as we kind of ramp back up. So I'm excited about today's conversation, hotel sales strategies and how you can get business right now. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background and uh, what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, my background, I'm going to be dating myself. When you said 25 years, I started with it. <laughs> yeah. I I started with Hilton 27 years ago in sales and it was an accidental sales job. I don't think anybody grows up and says, I want to go to school, I want to be a sales professional. But I've been I've made sales a career the last 27 years. And I spent 10 years with Hilton and had an amazing opportunity to grow as a DOS and in a global uh, sales role in a global office with, with Hilton. And my passion was always enabling hotels, enabling salespeople uh, to do better in their profession because a lot of times salespeople are thrown in the deep end. So here's your territory, go find business. And sales is a profession. And just like every other operating practice at a hotel, there's, there's practices and best practices when it comes to sales. So I wanted to set hotel owners and, and salespeople up for success. So that's how I started. And here I am 27 years later. Well, you have a great experience. You, I, I know a bunch of people that have connected with you and have learned from you. So uh, guys, in the comments, if you've ever uh, had a sales training with her team, uh, please comment and let, let us know uh, and say hello to her. Guys, if you have a question, yeah. Please let us uh, hit the comments and, and uh, please comment with a question. All right, so let's get right into it. I know we have a bunch of uh, questions about what's going on right now in in, in the space right now because it's like, kind of confusing. Like we don't know which direction to go in and what's working and what's not working. Tell us the secrets of kind of how we should start up and ramp up when we're talking about sales in in hotels. Yeah, I'll tell you a lot's changed as much as we're still under quarantine. And we still feel like it's Groundhog Day every day, the last eight or nine weeks. A lot has changed since I was on your show, which was two weeks after this, this you know, pandemic halted our industry, right? I think it yeah. was week two of the pandemic when all travel came to a grinding halt and hotels were absolutely in panic mode and rightly so. Yeah. So here's what we're seeing about eight weeks later. And again, the experiences I'm going to share today, we're seeing firsthand every day because we, we are making hundreds of calls a day to potential companies that have travel on behalf of the hotels we support. And so here's what we're seeing, which is encouraging the last few weeks, particularly and every week it's picking up steam. We're seeing signs of life across many markets in North America and knowing that not all markets are open for business. And we're seeing signs of life. Now, what that might mean is hotels that were, you know, initially during the COVID crisis operating at five or ten percent are now gradually seeing they're at twenty percent, or hotels that were at twenty percent are now seeing they're at thirty percent. 
And, you know, did you ever imagine we'd be satisfied with 30% occupancy? That's the crazy thing is we've all been so humbled by this. But the encouraging thing is in a lot of markets, we're seeing signs of life. And I'll talk more about what those segments are, but it's moving in the right direction in a very gradual way. The floodgates are not opening, but we'll talk more about which segments we're seeing and what you can do to go after those segments. Yeah, definitely. All right. So uh, what do you see within your group of hotels that you kind of manage? Are you seeing it kind of all over the place or which parts of the of United States? Because you're from Canada, uh, yes, but you have yep. offices and presence here too. So, and uh, most of your hotels, are they in the United States? Most of the hotels we support are in the U.S. just because it's such a bigger market. And so we're seeing trends on both sides of the border. And the hotels that we support and also the companies that we're calling, here's what's really interesting. We know initially, and even in some markets, the medical segment and some essential services within the government were booking a lot of rooms, depending on mm -hmm. uh, the pandemic in each market. And so that is is um, not as prevalent as as you know counties and states start to open up. There's not we're not seeing as much medical, uh, but here's what is still traveling that never stopped traveling is the workforce segment, and that is the blue collar gray collar segment. So hotels that were working with the CLCs, transportation companies, sanitation companies, all of those blue collar gray collar segments. If they were set up for success before COVID, those are the companies that continue to travel. And that's why they're able to get from 20% to 30%. On the contrary, those hotels that didn't wanna work with CLC, Travel Alliance, or some of the lower rated crew business aren't ramping up as fast. And perhaps before COVID, there was higher rated business to go after and they didn't want to have right. to give a low, deeply discounted rate uh, for good reasons to CLC or Travel Alliance. Now sure. they're wanting to get into those programs and there's a wait list. So hotels that were working with them that are showing signs of life, it's definitely coming from that blue collar, gray collar segment. There's no question. Okay, so that is the hottest segment right now. And I see construction uh, at our hotels. I mean, there are, our parking lot's packed with construction workers and, and people that are are tra that need to travel for business or need to travel for some kind of work or project they're working on and and so you know for me we're fortunate we've ramped we're in florida and and, and we're in a segment or we're in an area that has picked up like tremendously like we, we were sold out for the last couple of weeks right and uh weekends and it's been amazing and thank god for you know the stuff that we talk about i, I always talk about here on social media is your reviews your customer service that you should really focus on it's your marketing that you the channels that you should focus on you know all the things that we've been talking about we've now put them into place and we've doubled down on some of the marketing channels that we worked on so guys if you did miss the marketing uh, segment that we talked about we talked about 50 things that you are a bunch of things that you could do for your marketing, go back to uh, our my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Rupesh Live, and listen to what I'm talking about when we were talking about the the marketing side of things, because marketing and sales have to work together to kind of attract business. And you know, you're doing the marketing, you know, uh, tactics online so you can get those businesses to call in or uh, somehow connect with you through social or digital. And there's an opportunity, so. I think that's huge, and and for us, we see a lot of construction workers. A lot. I mean, construction hasn't stopped. If you look out anywhere, construction's booming, and I'm not sure if that's just our area or in Central Florida. Uh, it's. I think it's all over the place. So, guys, comment and let us know if the construction is still going on in your city, because it's important to understand. Like, it's not just dead. Like, it's not just doom and gloom. There's still opportunities out there. So, Tammy, what's a few things that you? We talked about CLC. We talked about the you know, the, the truckers and, and how do you get more of that construction business when you didn't focus on it or how do you double down if you already are focusing on it? Yeah. So great question. There's a few really great tactics. So one of them is uh, rail is still traveling and has not stopped traveling. So uh, a lot of those rail companies also go through CLC. So you might be seeing companies like CSX, BNSF. There are a lot of rail companies that actually 
don't book the generic CLC rate. They have a separate contract and it's a separate rate because they have so much volume. So those are the companies that are still traveling. So you, if you're working with CLC, I'll give you a few tips. If you're working with CLC and you're in the program and you're really not seeing the room nights, two critical things. You have to be logging in at least once a week to their portal. Hopefully you have a login and a password. And if your check-in score is not 80 or above, check-in score is a CLC thing. It's not TripAdvisor, it's their own terminology. And there's certain checks and balances. Uh -huh. And if for those of you that are familiar with CLC, and if you're not, you can go in, log in. It's gonna tell you what that check-in score. It's about, are you billing properly and in a timely manner? Are you taking their, tra um, their training modules? Is your discount uh, within that 25, 35% off your bar that you're, they're looking for? So you need to be careful because as you're playing with your bar rate during this pandemic, that could impact, you could be getting, you know, docked marks because you're not giving them a discount. So right. if here's the interesting thing, if you are below 80 in your check-in score, you are not viewable or bookable on their mobile app. So all of those workers that have mm. CLC rates that are driving around, you could have the best hotel with the best experience and you're just not on the shelf. So may, and it could be as simple as maybe you're at 76 and you forgot to take a training module. You take that training module, it takes 15 minutes and guess what? You're back on the shelf. So assign that to somebody. Mm. Secondly, you can proactively target the companies in your portal. It's telling you all the companies that actually booked the CLC rate. Don't take a passive approach, reach out to those companies, find out who made the booking and say something like, you know, thank you for those 10 room nights. What does that project look like um, in the coming months? How can we better serve you? Are there any other needs you have coming up that we can take care of? So be proactive. Um, so CLC, Travel Alliance, they both issued a COVID relief rate. So hotels that weren't working with them before or hotels that are willing to offer a lower rate during COVID, that is a separate rate, so you don't have to honor it forever. And that's how they're working with hotels during this time. So that's, you know, the third party companies are important. Parking lot checks are so important if you want this segment, right? Rapesh, you said you're seeing yes. trucks all over the place. Now it's difficult because you have, you know, limited staff. A lot of you have limited staff, but whomever's doing your night audit when they're driving in at 10 or 1030, can they be just hitting a couple parking lots and taking some pictures? And then as you build a sales culture, that night audit, instead of putting that lead on the owner's desk, when you have so many things to do, can they jump on LinkedIn or jump on, jump on Google and find out more about the company and who the booker might be so right. that you can you know, be three steps ahead the next morning when you come into the office. So parking lot checks are critical. Bid clerk, if you want construction. So bid clerk, a lot of you work with, it's a subscription, depending on your brand discount, it, it might be anywhere from six to 800 a year. And you can put in a radius and it's going to pull up all the construction projects in the next 90 to 100 days. Now you have to work it. It could take many points of interaction. It's not, I'm going to make one call today and they're checking in next week. But Do we you have, have a... Sorry, do you have a, a rep that you talk to? Because I've never used BidClerk. I know a bunch of salespeople are like, you have to use BidClerk. Guys, comment okay. if you use BidClerk. <laughs> yeah, and so I can, I'm can. i happy to send you the email. Uh, there are two key people on, on the hotel team at BidClerk, and they're divided by brand. Mm -hmm. And I know they've got some flexible billing during this time and payment options for hotels. Trust me, we don't have a stake in BidClerk but we have been converting, we convert millions of dollars a year using this tool. And so we continue, that's, that's a marketing tool that we use on behalf of our hotels. Um, before you spend any money, and I'll, I'll give you this advice, I would say to them, tell me in the next 90 to 100 days, how many projects are happening in my backyard and what's the value of them? So don't just write a check or give them your mm. credit card because not all markets are booming with construction. So that's another way to get that segment. And lastly, check your arrivals reports. And this is for all segments. You don't have a lot of, most hotels don't have a ton of arrivals now. So 
it's a discipline and we're seeing a lot more OTA reservations come in over COVID. And it could be corporate that's booking those OTAs. It could be last minute construction projects. If you do not know who's staying with you and they're checking in and out, you are missing out on a huge opportunity to A, um, connect with them directly and get a direct booking next time. But maybe there's a lot more business to go after where that came from. Mm -hmm. So go through those arrivals reports and make sure you're training the front desk on what brings you to town. Thank you for staying with us. And tell me a little bit about the project that you're working on. And, now and ask them open-ended questions. Yeah, and I love that. I'm writing these down as, you, as you're talking. All right, so there are some questions. Guys, comment and let us know. You guys are asking some great questions and you're being really engaging. Guys, guys don't forget, we're giving away five books during the show. So I'm, I'm trying to remember these people that are really engaging. And if you'd like to hit the like button right now, guys, and, and let us know that this has been valuable for you. Um, all right, so there are some questions out here really quick before we move on, since we're talking about this segment. Um, all right, so Ashley says, how can you get those contractors to stay with, with mm. without giving up on rate, right? Uh, which is important. Like, I don't want to be giving 50% of my hotel, uh, but do I do I do that to get their business? Like, what what are some things that you we should consider when we're considering rate and then the percentage to give to these uh, to these uh, partners? Yeah, it's it's a Good really question. great question, and and that's why a lot of company, a lot of hotels, weren't necessarily wanting to work with these companies pre-COVID if they didn't need to because they could get higher rate of business. Yeah. Look, you know what your bottom is you know how low you can go. A lot of these um, contractors, they're direct bookings, you're not paying fees, you're not. So what I say is you need to build your base. And when you build your base business, it might be with some lower rated crew, but they're the ones that are going to hopefully help your overall rev par, and then you can get a higher rate online. Right now we have hotels going back and working with opaque sites like Priceline and Hotwire because they need to mm -hmm. sell rooms. Those are expensive channels. And that is an expensive way to build base business. If you can go after that blue collar, gray collar segment and land at a rate that works for the hotel, that is a much more profitable way than selling all your rooms to third party sites deeply discounted. That's not a strategy to build base. Absolutely. So so work to build base with those direct companies, then you can be less reliant on those OTAs and it's gonna help your overall rev par. Okay, one more question. Ashley, good, thank you so much for um, chiming in. What are good value adds to include in construct with, you know, with the construction company? So you're trying to get the business and you're like, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, we're gonna do this, we're gonna offer an excellent service. What, <clears throat> what else can we offer? Yeah, so this 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 segment, there's a few things that really matter to them. They want access to food and beverage. So even Ooh. if it's <laughs> well, even if it's nearby restaurants, so having a um, that are doing takeout or you know um, door dot whatever it is that delivery service. So having that information there. If you mm -hmm. have an early grab and go breakfast, if it doesn't start till seven, that's not going to help. They're out the door by five thirty or six o'clock. So you have to understand the day in the life of, of what it's like for these people. They leave early, they come back early evening, they want access to laundry, and wow. they're pretty, they're pretty, I say low maintenance, but some owners who are listening might say, trust me, they're not low maintenance. <laughs> um, I think they just want to be cared for. It's their home away from home. Yeah. So that we know we're not doing hot buffets right now. Um, we all understand that as travelers and that's just yeah. the way the industry is going right now. But you have coffee in the lobby in the morning, grab and go breakfast, good truck parking, well lit, safe truck parking. So that's the day in the life. They don't need bells and whistles. And if you are in a good location that's next and nearby that project, that's enough for them. They're sleeping in their room because they're working 12 hours a day. Right. And, and so I, I was thinking with the whole kind of taking care of these construction workers or some of the blue car workers that are actually working with right now, which is we and we're thankful for them, like thankful for the truckers that are delivering stuff for all of us. Yes. We wouldn't have anything, right? Uh, so not the toilet people that have everyone's been going crazy over or anything, <laughs> milk, you know, bread, anything. So I'm 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 proud of them. I'm proud of everybody that's been 
super helpful during this time because it's not just one segment. It's not just healthcare. It's like everybody, like the mail is getting delivered. It's your drivers, it's UPS, it's FedEx that is driving and risking their life because they're coming in delivering stuff to you, right? And they're out there. So I, well, the food uh, I appreciate suppliers. it. Agreed. Yeah. Every, everybody. You know, one simple thing that we could do is make them feel really good. Make, if they're doing laundry and you know they're going to be doing laundry because they're staying a week, make a little gift basket or a little plastic bag that has free detergent and free, uh, you know, Love it. soaps and, and for, for their laundry. Don't let them pay because I know you have that machine next to that vending machine in, the, in your in your room or your sweet shop or your, you know, your, your lobby shop. Give it to them and, and write a little handwritten card to Thank you so much, Mr. Smith. We really appreciate you guys staying with us. And these things matter. And I love what? that idea. That's amazing. These things, simple things matter, I think. Um, what do you guys do? Guys, if you're listening, what are you doing to keep these people? Because I love that question. Like, what are we doing? What's value add uh, as we continue getting and keeping their business? Because guess what? Now, you might have gotten their business this week. But if your neighbors are shopping you and they're calling directly and they're, they're, they're doing the parking lots too, there's an opportunity that if you didn't take care of them, treat them good, go above and beyond like we should, right? In the ho we're hospitality based, right? Uh, these you could lose that business. So doing these little 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 simple things and making them feel really good is part of the whole uh, package, right? So true. We have a, we have a few clients and and who really rely on this business. And one of them, uh, and I was on site at the hotel, and it just blew me away. They had a boot cleaner outside and maybe some of you'd be interested to hear how many have this it's a boot cleaner and um because those those guys and gals don't want to be dragging mud and dirt and 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 you know through your hotel and they've got the boot covers so that they can actually walk to their room with the boot covers take their boots off and they really I feel that you you understand me you're not treating me like every other traveler you understand what's important I'd be interested as well, Rapesh, because of this uh, pandemic, there's a lot of hotels that have closed their laundry facilities. And I don't know how many of your listeners have actually closed laundry. It might be actually hurting you uh, to, to be able to attract some of this business. We know you need to, you know, maybe only let one person at a time in the laundry room and you have to have someone on hand to clean it. But this segment, that is pretty important. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's um, important that we really take care of them. And there's so many, I, I can't even add all the comments that are, people are, are saying, that, you know, they, they, they put notes in the rooms. There's direct links to all these different restaurants. They partnered up with Love restaurants. It. Like Love if it. you're fav if you have a favorite partner, really partner up with them because guess what? They're hurting too. They might be at 25% occupancy, which the state might be recommending, or that's the law that they have to kind of abide to. This is an opportunity to build a really strong partnership with the local restaurant right next door. Like, hey, we love your food. Our entire team loves your food. And I think our guests would love it too if we can you know, have some kind of partnership. And it doesn't have to be one-sided. It could be like both ways. Or guess what? If you really want to build rapport, it could be all about them. Like you should have no – it could be nothing about you and just all about them. Like – Hey, you know, I, I tried this. Like, hey, will you give us a coupon, and we'll put, we'll give it with, you know, we'll we'll have them do it digitally or whatever, so guests can save as they, you know, as they might get a free drink with their dinner, or they might get a yeah. free appetizer or something like that that really builds their business because that's who you're looking to, you know, help out. But then guess what? They're also going to think about you in the maybe not right now, but in the future when they're busy, like who are the people that took care of me, right? I talked about this earlier when, we, when this all first happened, like people are really gonna remember, Tammy, you, that you've helped all these people during this time, mm -hmm. right? When we're all struggling, you're here to help us. And, uh, and I'm writing down notes just like everybody else is, like we really appreciate this. So the same thing at your hotel, build partners that you, that are gonna last a lifetime because that's what people remember. And, and, and they're going to remember that. And guests are going to remember too, like, hey, you offered something to us when you didn't have to, right? Or you went above and beyond. And I love all those things. So, And then it doesn't become about rate. I mean, yes, they have, they may have a per diem, yeah. but sometimes we make it about rate and the comp set makes it about rate. But if we don't have any, you know, I say meat on the bones, we have to put some meat on the bones. So it's not just down to rate because service and care is absolutely how uh, we're going to come out the other side of this. There's no question. Jared brings a great idea, and I love this. You know, in Florida, 
Tammy, I'm not sure if you've been here during love bug season and it's crazy. Oh no, I it haven't. Will, it will tear, if you just drive like two miles, it will tear your entire windshield apart and all your paint if you leave no way. Love, love bugs on. Yeah, I drive almost an hour sometimes uh, to go to different uh, locations and within an hour, like my entire windshield's filled up. Think about guests that have been traveling up and down the United States or left to right, how their windows have been, you know, clogged up and pretty much they have to stop filthy, at every rest area yeah. to get squeegee it. What if you had a little bucket at check-in or at their around where they're checking in registration and you had a little sign that said, hey, uh, this is just a, a convenience for you. So you don't have to go run and get a car wash that you didn't really want to, or your entire car wasn't dirty. It was just your windshield. And that's like an opportunity right there. What a great home. example. Great. That would blow me away as a traveler, right? That's how you, you build this fan base and this loyal, they're advocating for you. They're telling all their buddies. That's how you build loyal clients. I love that idea. Yeah. Well, all right. So, all right. We talked about this segment that we're, that's really traveling right now. We see it and a lot of other people are seeing it. Um, I think it's a great idea. And, and uh, I, I think there's some other ways we can get business too. So I know we have some questions that I, I kind of put wrote down is uh, what are some, as what are some tactics as far as getting other uh, segments, like what segments are not coming back and kind of share where you're seeing things as, as far as, should I only focus on this, uh, this segment or what other segments can I focus on while I'm trying to, because like you were saying earlier, don't focus on one thing, but pick up a, a few things, right? It's mm -hmm. not going to be all one. Cause if you focus on one, you might, that might all dry up and then you're like, Oh no. And you know, a lot of GMs have called me or sent me a message the last few weeks. They're like, we got government business. We're done. We're, we're set for the next three months. We're not, we don't need anything else. And then guess what? The national guard leaves in yes. two weeks and they're like, Oh, we, we didn't do anything else to like get more business. And now they're like, struggling and they're stressed out. So what are some things that we could focus on? What are some other channels that we could focus on right now as well? Yeah. And I, I love that. You don't want all your eggs in one basket. And so here's, so for those of you, um, depending on the market you, you are in, are you in a leisure destination? Are you near an airport? Are you in a tier one market that relies heavily on big conventions and tourists? Are you in a secondary or tertiary market? Are you in a, a government town? Are you in a university town? So first of all, we have to identify the market that we're in and based on the hotel segment, are you economy? Are you select service? Are you upper scale? Are you full service? So, you know, we need to be re-looking at our sales plan between now and the next six months. I, I wouldn't look any further out because there's too many moving pieces and then, you know, you need to, it's iterative. You need to um, evolve it but you want to identify those demand generators. So who's traveling now? Workforce, check. You know, is that relevant to me? We're seeing small groups start to come back, believe it or not. We're getting wedding blocks for the summer. Which, what, type which, of, what type of small groups? Because I think everybody would like to know. <laughs> yeah, so this has been really surprising the last couple of weeks. So check your hotel planner. We're seeing, um, again, floodgates aren't opening, but we're seeing signs of life. We've been booking wedding groups into the summer and into the fall. And this has been the biggest surprise to me is small sporting groups are coming back. Small amateur sporting groups. As certain cities um, begin to open, some of those tournaments are coming back, smaller tournaments. So if, again, in your sales plan, you want to say, what's going to give me business right now? What's my short game? Because I need to survive. And then what's my long game? So what do we know about the business travel segment? The big global corporate accounts that maybe you go through RFP with your brands, they are not coming back anytime soon. Now I wanna put a caveat in there. If they are in the workforce segment, like BNSF, Hall, you know, Halliburton, those are big global accounts. So they are traveling, but I'm talking about those big white collar corporate accounts that you would do uh, an RFP for. Those are the ones that are going to take longer to come back. It could be the fall. It could be early next year. It doesn't mean ignore them. You have to have a, you know, you have to multitask and say, here's what I'm doing now. I'm going after small group. 
I'm going after leisure. I'm making sure that all my online content is up to date and that I'm making sure I've got great pictures. I'm talking about all the new cleaning protocols. I may be spending some money on Google ads. So that's leisure because we know people are going to be driving around uh, for vacation first, probably versus getting on an airplane, but then local corporate. So the name of the game going forward, it is going to be who's going to do a better job owning their back backyard. Mm. And you need to get scrappy and roll up your sleeves and, and you're going to have to fight as hard and hunt as hard for five or 10 room nights as you did for 50. Yeah. So that's the reality. So it's scrappy and it's working with your front desk looking at that arrivals report and identifying the market segments in your backyard. So when government starts to open up, right? We, we know that there were National Guard and emergency services traveling. But if you're near a military base, when that starts to open up, what does that mean for travel? So if you're getting federal uh, government business or state or local, what are you doing to keep um, tabs on when that business starts to resume. Mm. So you need to have a multi-pronged approach to say, here's my short game. I'm going to continue to get workforce. I'm in a government market. I want to go after some of those small groups and I'm going to nurture my accounts that aren't traveling maybe until later in the fall. I'm not going to ignore them. I'm going to reach out to make sure my competitors are not more aggressive and flashing cheap rates in front of them to try to steal my business. Yeah. And here's a great question. Curtis asks in a heavy, you know, group downtown convention market thoughts on how to attract business. Cause you're like, no one's even, I, I'm looking around and no one's even here. Like this is my city's dead. Like how do you focus on that? When it was like, we were a convention hotel. We relied on convention. Even the restaurants around us relied on convention. Now, what do we do? Yeah, I think that's where you've got to kind of cast your net and, and look in your backyard and say, what other demand generators are there that maybe we weren't well positioned to capture because of rate or because we were full with conventions? So um, do you have the right leisure promotions? Are you near um, a university? And as universities, there's some questions about what the fall looks like and online classes and all that good stuff. But, um, you know, nearby hospitals and medical and government, you really have to be able to identify what are those market segments that perhaps because you were busy with other business, you weren't proactively hunting. And one mm -hmm. thing to note, I want to mention going back to corporate because you want to see signs of life. For those of you that subscribe to Agency 360, that Travel Click report, um, Travel click slash Amadeus. There's a lot of good information there in terms of corporate travel. However, the report that we are relying on right now, when you go into that portal, is the next 13 weeks report. So you can actually pull a report that shows the next 13 weeks what travel agencies are booking corporate business into your comp set and into your hotel. Oh. That's showing you signs of life. It might only be a couple of hundred room nights total, but it, you know, that's kind of where you want to hunt. You're getting scrappy and following the breadcrumbs. You can't wait for the phone to ring. You cannot sit back and just hope that the phone's going to light up and that all the channels are going to, you know, start producing room nights. You have to be in the driver's seat. There's no question. Right, right. I, I love that you, what are the tools? Because I know people are here like to understand some tools too. What are some sales tools that we should all be kind of considering? Because there's, we talked about BidClerk, we talked about um, some of these other researching tools. What do you do as far as like, how do I use Google? Like a simple, I know ah. there's some simple things that we could do right now. Like we don't have to go buy this strategy or we'd go subscribe to this one thing. Tammy, I, this is like, I'm just throwing, we didn't even talk about this. I like, no, throw, I I like throwing it. a wrench. I like throwing a wrench, right? Uh, what if I have if I open up Google right now and I'm searching for something, how do I get scrappy and do some ninja tactics on how I can uh, get some business in right now? What can I do? What are some search things I could do on via Google? So I want to set this up by saying we can get lost all day long on Google. <laughs> yes. um, so a couple of things. 
Hotels rarely lack the tools, it's the execution. So I wanna say that. Mm -hmm. Under the roof of your hotel, you have more data in your arrivals reports, on your brand portal, lost accounts, inactive accounts. So first of all, you've got more data. You might not be tracking it, you might not be leveraging it, but it is rarely a case of I need to buy more marketing tools. It's usually I wear many hats. Sales is not necessarily my wheelhouse or before I was so busy managing incoming inquiries, I didn't have time making outbound calls. Um, hotels usually fall short um, on the execution. So that I just wanna say, pull your brand reports, make sure that you're using all the reports and, and that data going through that arrivals report. But let's talk about Google, cause I do love Google. Yeah. Um, set up Google alerts. So those of you and that, you can go down a rabbit hole very quickly with Google. I love Google Alerts. And I see that Peggy just commented there. <laughs> so if you go to google.com uh, um, forward slash Google Alerts, here's what you wanna set Google Alerts up for. The top accounts, maybe the, the big employers in your backyard, you can key in the word uh, BNSF, Halliburton, the name of a construction project, your economic development corporation, any Google alerts on a project, on a company, and it is pushed to you by email. So you don't have to dig and you get to determine when you get it. So when I years ago, when I first set up Google alerts, I was so excited. I'm like, I want it real time. And then my email box blew up. So you can actually have it sent to a folder. You can say, I want it at this time every day. Set up a Google alert for your competition. Now, again, you're going yeah, to get a, yeah. a ton of, you know, brand promotions, but um, any press releases. So here's how you can research leads as well. It's really good for the Smurf segment is you can reverse Google your competition. So put in their address, their phone number and the name of, let's say, because I'm Canadian, I'm going to say uh, hockey tournament and you're going to put the phone number of your competition and a hockey tournament in January, 2021. And any, any um, kind of tournament that's staying at that hotel that's publicly posted it, that's going to come up. But I would also mm. put previous years. So maybe January of 2020, so that you can target them for next year. Right. So Google can be very distracting but it's definitely set up those Google alerts, reverse Google the competition. And we'll talk more about prospecting later, but you want to be, um, before you pick up the phone and call a, a potential client, you want to be Google uh, searching the company and why they're traveling and why they might need your services. Yeah, uh, Tammy, one other thing I would, I like to add on the marketing side of things, because you know, Mark, sales and marketing are working together, right? Right, I of always feel that. Um, so we were talking about Google uh, alerts. Here's a great tip. You know, GMs or staff members, when they're really engaging and they're really caring and they ask, uh, they're really friendly, guess what? Their name gets popped up on social media, on reviews, on OTAs. Google alerts, a perfect opportunity for good and ah. bad. Let me explain the good and bad. Type in your name and the city or your hotel name. And then anytime your name is mentioned on the internet, you get a you get a Google alert based on what we're talking about, based on how you want it. So while we did this a while back, a few years ago, maybe five, six years ago, we got a bad review. And it said something really bad about a GM. And she was upset. And I was like, I understand that you're upset because you know it wasn't your fault, but this guest was just upset. But they named her and they put her first name and last name. And I was like, oh, you know, it's it's hard, it's it's hard to deal with that when your name's publicly posted online somewhere. And I said, you know what? Let's put up a Google alert for your name. So anytime your name's mentioned, you're not waiting weeks and then all of a sudden your friend or your coworker or somebody else, another hotel says, hey, I saw a bad review with your name on it. Did you see it? And it could be any channel. So Google Alerts is great for that where you can get your alert for a, uh, for reviews. You can get an alert for your hotel's name. You can do all those different things too. So it's sales and marketing working together to make great it Great so idea. Can, I'm yeah, going I, to set up a Google Alert for my name. I've never done that. Please so that's, do. That's it's great, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, here's the thing. People, I, I get invited to speak at a lot of different, you know, online platforms, and I don't know when they're going to post it or when it goes live. 
And sometimes they don't tell me, or if an article goes live and they mention my name, they never tell me about it. So I have a Google alert that says, anytime my name's mentioned anywhere, I get an alert and it sends me the link. So I just click on that alert and it Love takes it. me to that article. And I thank them like, hey, thank you so much. And maybe I might share with my on my social media. Uh, that's a great way of building local partnerships too when you're talking about sales. Like if if you said, hey, restaurant A or a ABC restaurant, uh, you know they have a great blog or they have something that's awesome. Now you're not always going to their blog and reading it. If they mentioned your name, you would show up on a Google alert, right? I love that, that you can get notified. That's great. I, and I wanna share two more quick tools. And again, budgets aren't unlimited. And no. I really encourage you to start in-house first before you start spending money on some of these marketing tools because you know before you go buy mailing lists, you probably have it in your PMS. You've got lots of opportunities and brand reports to go after, start there first. But we use a tool called Zoom Info. Uh, they have a competitor called Lead Ferret. And we don't necessarily use it to say, oh, gee, what leads are in this backyard? Because we have other ways, you know, other tools and stuff that we find out. But you can get decision maker uh, information and the, kind of the organizational structure of key of accounts. So let's say we're trying to find the decision maker for BNSF, the travel buyer, the procurement person. And despite our research, we can't find it before calling reception. Uh, Zoom info is, again, it's expensive. So you might wanna share it if you own multiple hotels, maybe you get one license and you share it. Uh, but we we use that just to go in and out and update our, our database and our contact list. I and, like that. I'll... Yeah, so lead fair, Zoom info, and then LinkedIn, right? So LinkedIn, depending on the segments you're going after, if you're going after corporate, you can be finding decision maker information, what's your background, how long have they been doing their job, who else in the company might be involved in that booking process. There's no shortage of information. We want to make sure that we're efficient and that we focus on also execution. Understand. All right. So a lot of people are asking uh, our staff, and we I think we talked about this a, a few days ago. Your staff is a huge opportunity for sales, right? You might be getting some calls in, and we talked. What can we do with the team that we have? It might be a limited team. We might be the general manager working the front desk because we're so slow. What can we do or what can the staff do when calls come in? How do you keep that aligned and how do you keep it going? Because I know the first person uh, that gets that lead and if you don't convert it within hours, you might lose it to your competition. That's exactly right. And so you have to think about not only the staff that you have now, knowing that you've got lean operations, but how do you plan to bring your staff back, right? They've been impacted they've been financially impacted, they're worried about their health, they're worried about job security, and you need to prepare them for the front line to also welcome the guests back. So you really wanna be treating it like this reopening, this grand reopening, whether you've closed or not. And so now is the time to reflect on, listen, pre-COVID, in terms of frontline staff, sales and service, what were we doing really, really well that when we bring the team back, we need to refresh, you know, for example, our new brand standards when it comes to cleaning protocols, social distancing, what kind of training do we want to do to make sure that they can clearly articulate that at the front desk and on calls. But also, what were you doing where you were seeing some gaps, you were seeing some gaps, maybe turnover at the front desk, maybe there wasn't a consistent way they were handling incoming inquiries. Maybe they weren't taking a name and number back when people were calling. So it's really important now to say, what weren't you doing um, well? And what were some gaps you were seeing pre-COVID? Because now's the time to put those standard operating procedures in place. Every front desk should have an incoming inquiries form that you train your staff on. Here's how you handle an incoming inquiry. Here are the questions. Here are some possible objections you might get over social distancing, cleaning protocols, what we've done um, to keep them safe. We have to set them up for success. And the more variables we have, the less consistent the experience is. So manage the variables, have those SOPs in place, and really treat this like a grand reopening. 
your front desk, their ability to handle those incoming inquiries and your sales department, there's no question. That is where, that's where business will be won or lost. There's no question is, is how equipped they are to, to convert those reservations. Yeah. Yeah. I think the staff, especially if you're doing, I mean, there's a bunch of, <laughs> there's a bunch of lead tools that you can use. And a simple one is like Google ads and how you can have those to a call action or something to your website. But if they are calling, cause you know, some people prefer to be called if you're, if, if, and make a reservation, right. Especially right now when there's like a lot of hacking and spamming going on because people are vulnerable. Uh, some people might feel comfortable just calling the hotel to understand. Um, and this is an opportunity where you really understand and, and take care of that guest and understand what they need. So that way you can either hand it if it's 10 rooms or more or whatever your policy is at your hotel that you take that channel and make sure you process it and make sure it happens because that guest is not going to wait forever. Right. And maybe do some role playing. Don't just take the, the press release from your brand on the new cleaning program. We have to sit down and rewrite our value proposition. What does that mean for the guest? What does it mean for this segment? What does it mean for this segment? And then help your, your staff break in these new shoes. Let's role play it. And I know it might sound corny, but you don't want it leaving their lips the first time when the phone starts to ring and you lose a piece of business. So role play it out together and they're going to be empowered. They're going to be excited to talk about all the great things you're doing for safety and for cleanliness and how excited you're all going to be to welcome your guests back. So set your team up for success. There's no question. Absolutely. Uh, guys, if you have any questions and, and if you like this so far, we're, we're, we're almost an hour into it. And if you like this, please hit the like button and comments that we know uh, that you're enjoying this and if you have a question regarding sales or sales please let uh let us hit, hit the comments and let us know um a lot of a lot of great questions coming in and i'm super excited today actually was the first day i got an opportunity to showcase all the comments in the uh in the live so you know usually i, I have to read them and then go there but you know there's a lot of people I, I i could just pull up this and say michael says hey what what are your recommendations for cancellation policies because right now people are like oh i'm gonna book and then all of a sudden i don't uh, what is that? What, what should cancellation policies be? Should it be laxed or should we be tough on it? Because we don't want to lose that business. Yeah, I think what you're hearing is, you know, brands certainly have a certain view on this, but I think flexibility is going to be important. And I, I think, you know, non-refundable is a term in, in the short term and near term that's probably going to be going away. So I think you have to be looking at at some flexibility, definitely around cancellation, because there's so much uncertainty. There's no question. Right. And um, Norbert asked I me, mean, you know, we talked about this a, a while back and, and OTAs have been successful. Like if you look at your reservation activity report, yes. there's a lot of OTA business coming in. And I, was, and I asked you yesterday, I said, Tammy, why is that? And guys, if you're experiencing the same, uh, I would love to learn if you're if that's part of the business is coming in stronger than maybe a direct booking or call-ins or some of the other channels, is this, uh, what can we do? Cause uh, you know, we don't want to leave all our money and I know we're yielding and we're trying to get business from everywhere, but sometimes it's just hard when there's a channel that's coming in, it's bringing the majority of your business. So here's what we're noticing across all of our hotels. We're seeing an increase in OTAs and there's, there's probably a few reasons for it. Number one, Pre-COVID, they're marketing machines, right? They have a budget much larger than most brands combined. So we can't uh, ignore that. But secondly, they are booking lower rates online. So we were, work, you know, we uncovered um, a 3M reservation for one of our clients that booked through Expedia. And so we had the front desk qualify it. You know, what brings you to town? Well, I'm here for, with 3M. They're essential services, right? They've been making masks. Yeah. And um, we asked a question, why did you book Expedia? Because it's lower than my corporate rate. So yeah. there's there's consequences, right? I know we want to light up these channels, but for those accounts that are your that, that are your big accounts, you want to protect the rate integrity. Because if you're dropping rates on Expedia, booking.com, then you could have these corporate accounts traveling and staying with you that you're not even aware of. And they're not going to trust that their corporate rate is the lowest because they can get a lower rate. So we're really not encouraging good behavior and we're not encouraging hotels to book directly. 
And lo and behold, you might, you know, check production at the end of the year and say, 3M never books with me. Well, no, they've been booking, but they've been booking online. And it's important to note a lot of these online booking tools that companies use that have their corporate rates loaded, it has the ability that if there's a lower rate on the OTA, it pops up and says, book this lower rate on Expedia. So I get we need to absolutely sell rooms, but just be aware, try to have it in parity with your big accounts because it will erode some of that business. There's no question. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people are looking. Uh, I think people are, uh, some people are booking OTAs because they don't have the money to shell it out themselves or uh, maybe their company or they, if they're working through the that segment we we're talking about for construction, they might be not booking directly because they are not getting paid back. They're not getting reimbursed, but the company's actually booking their reservations now since they're kind of limited and maybe their their credit cards or um, their their line of or their credit card line was frozen. I know a lot of companies are doing that where like, hey, all all credit card lines are frozen. We'll book the stay with you for you guys, and that's it, right? That might be a reason. There's a ton of reasons why people are booking through OTA, but it's definitely an opportunity for you to convert them if they stay at your hotel to convert them back to staying booking with you and show them the benefits of why. Because then a lot of times you're like, oh, just go ahead and you know you get your receipt at checkout. Or when they're checking out, they're like, oh, you just get your receipt from who you booked it from. But this is an opportunity. You can explain the reasons why and you can show them points and maybe you give them a bonus. And uh, there's so many different things like Mr. Smith, you know, uh, here are the benefits that you could re uh, benefit from booking directly. And next time, give out your card, give out something, get, send them an email saying next time, do you have to book directly with us? And I think there's an opportunity there. A lot of hotels in the past, have, the last three months, a lot of hotels are saying, if somebody checks in, we have them and they check out or before they check in, we actually give them a little coupon that says, if one, if you stay one more than twenty percent, be booked directly with us, or come back to the front desk, mm. and that way they're not going back to the OTA to book another night, but they're coming back to you or ten percent, whatever the discount is, and converting into a a loyalty member or just a, a loyal customer for that particular hotel, which I is a great opportunity. It's I talked about this last week or two weeks ago in the marketing segment. I love Bed Bath and Beyond's marketing plan. Uh. I love any. Any business that sends you a coupon because people use it. Like you stress out in, in the middle of Bed Bath and Beyond. If you don't have a coupon, you're like searching for true, it. True. It's true. Right? So this is an opportunity. Like, hey, there's a percentage of people that actually love coupons and they just love the idea of saving money. Um, and this is an opportunity to check in, say, Mr. Smith, I see you're staying for one night. Uh, here's a discount for another night if you book directly with us. And Hey, that might be something that you just converted them into, and then you do all these things that your hotel's known for, right? Opportunity. And then I would I recommend as well, and that's perfect. So my equivalent of Bed Bath and Beyond is Tommy Bahama. I love getting my Tommy Bahama. You know, it's one hundred and thirty bucks for a shirt, but they're going to give you, you know, sixty five dollar credit, and I feel important, and I'm going to shop even if I don't even, you know, need it. But one additional step is we have to be asking. The coupon is an important piece. What company are they with? Do you know you actually have a corporate rate with us? Let's sign you up for the rewards program. And then there could be 10 more travelers that are staying at the comp set. We are all trying to figure out who is traveling right now. And if we don't capture the company name, we are managing blindly. And so we need to be chasing these pieces of the puzzle. That's the scrappy part. We're asking a lot of questions. We're training our front desk. We're doing the parking lot checks. We find another piece of the puzzle. And again, you're gonna hustle and, and work hard for, for five room nights, but that's how you gradually ramp up your occupancy. And then you're gonna keep the others warm for when those segments return. All right, good. I, we're almost in the lot and almost closing this up because I know we could talk about this, Tammy, for like hours. I know. Maybe after this, we'll just get on the phone and just talk for hours. Talk sales. Actually, today, Tammy's actually recording or she's live here from a hotel. Like, this is this like yes. one of your first times doing this? Because I know a lot of hotels, I've been seeing it on LinkedIn, like, hey, tired of staying at home and tired of uh, doing the whole Zoom and the working from home? Come stay in our hotel room or a meeting space and feel free to kind of relax and get some work done. And is that what you're doing right now? Yeah, so I was a good marketing campaign would be tired of your teenagers, which I was completely <laughs> tired of our teenagers. 
and our dogs. And um, I've had this was very important today. We're, I'm doing an AHOA webinar this afternoon. And I just wanted um, a shift in energy, right? We're all working from home and it's a local hotel that we use. They're great. Um, they've done a really great job uh, explaining what the protocol is. I have a menu yeah. here for lunch that they're going to deliver. Um, you know, and it's great to be giving a local hotel some business. Is it digital? Is it a digital menu or is it like a, a hard menu? No, it's a hard menu, but it's interesting. All the pens and papers are removed in here. It's very minimal. There was coffee waiting at the front door, um, a basket for used pens. I guess that they'll sanitize a basket with, with clean pens. So just, you know, great detail, really good communication. And uh, I texted my husband and said, I might stay here for the month. I, I might not be yeah. coming back anytime soon. Well, Bobby says, uh, Tammy for president, Gillis Patel. I think we're running for office, both of us. Oh, I'll be your, Bobby. I'll hey, be, Bobby. I'll be, I know Bobby. I'll, I'll be the vice president. Is that okay? <laughs> You'll be the veep. Yeah, we'll make, we'll make a show. Now, one thing I know we promised, and we can always have a part two on this, but we did promise to talk about emails. Yes, that and, is true. That and is how to prospects. Absolutely. And Tammy, before we get, before we continue the email and how to write the perfect email so you get a response, guys, comment and let me know. Let us know that this has been uh, helpful. This segment has been helpful. And if you want another part two, because I know there's a bunch of things that we can continue talking about. And I picked three, three people so far for winning the book. I need two more, guys. If you've been, um, if you're wanting to, uh, and Tammy, can you just tell us really quickly what the book is so that we can kind of entice them to ask some questions and yeah. I want to pick two more people. So it's an electronic sales playbook that I've narrated and it's short and sweet. It's a, it's a little, um, it's something that you can have with your team and it's for, it's whether you have a sales team or not. So if you're an owner or general manager, it's going to teach you enough to be dangerously effective if it's for a director of sales or a salesperson, it's a really good tool to sharpen your saw so that on the other side of this, you're going to be more relevant. So we talk about how to sell to the modern buyer. What are they looking for? Um, how to identify key demand generators and go after them. And then a step-by-step -step on how you execute uh, a sales strategy via email or on the phone. So what are the objectives? What's your opening statement sound like? What are some really juicy qualifying questions? So I am guiding you through the entire sales process so you can increase your sales effectiveness and close more, uh, close more pieces of business. Well, that's what we want to do. And, and how we can close business is through that connection, that communication that you have at your hotel. And if you're the GM, DOS, I mean, these strategies could be for anybody. Like you could take this as a front office manager or a front desk associate and you can be inspired to to do these sales um, these sales tactics and strategies because guess what maybe you're you're aspiring to be the gm or the dos and these are things that you could do right now to show your team that hey i'm not just sitting around and watching TikTok or watching videos on youtube but exactly. i'm willing to do some work for the team and this is a part when all these strategies you're not doing on your own you're doing it as far as a team is concerned and so delegating these tasks, Tammy, I think is going to be valuable for all of us where, oh, no, I have a list of 50 things and I'm not going to be able to get them all done right now or in the short in, in the next month. But how can I get my how can I rely on my team? And guess what? Then it feels good as far as a leader that you can have your team involved in these and they feel good about being a part of the process of growing your business and ramping back up. So I think it's huge. And part of that is the email side that mm. we all use every single day and I, I and i gotta be honest i i sometimes i suck at emails and i'm like i make it short but it's not actionable and i think i mess up because i don't get a response back so teach us yeah. how to build the perfect email that we, we can get a response back and book them to stay at our hotel yeah and i go into detail in the sales playbook but i've, I've written down some key facts i want to tell you about why this is important it takes, so according to um, some research that I've done, HubSpot is a company that is a marketing software automation tool. Uh, I subscribe, I get some really good data around open rates and you know sales funnel. Yeah. So some recent data from, from them, it takes 18 dials to connect to one buyer. Now these stats I'm sharing with you is not to depress you, okay? It's to motivate you to be more relevant because this is why it's so important. Callback rates are less than 
5%. Now think of all of you that get those sales emails every day. Rapesh, I'm sure you have people selling you stuff all day all long. Day. All day. And what makes you open that email? What makes you delete that email? We're all on the receiving end of those sales pitches, right? But we're also overwhelmed. We're, we're working with lean resources. We're overwhelmed with stabilizing our businesses. We don't have time for sales pitches. So here are another um, you know, couple of things. Since COVID, there's been a 50% increase in sales emails. And the response rate is 2.1%. This is why it matters. We all see these emails and phone phone calls where we're smiling and dialing. That is not going to work. It's not about volume. It's about the quality. So I, I'm going to give you a recommendation from an author and a speaker who's a sales guru that I've been following for 20 years. Her name is Jill Conrath. She's not specific to hotels, but she's she's so relevant and spot on. So in email, she recommends, well, first of all, let me ask you, Rapesh, what do you think is the most important part of an email when you're writing it to a client? What, for, what me, stands I, I think, out? for me, I think it's a subject line where if I'm going to open it or not open it, or it's going to go to my spam, like automatic <laughs> spam, I think the subject line is huge. And then I also think the PS line is huge too. So two things I really focus on when I'm trying to now write emails. The subject line, yeah, a lot of people are looking at their email on their phone, right? And so what do they see first? They see who it's from, I don't know this person. They see the subject line and they see the first sentence. And right away it's delete, this is a sales message or you know, hang on, I better open this one. So subject yeah. line is important. There is a subconscious filter that we have when we look at emails. So you'll wanna write this down. There's four boxes subconsciously we go through. When we're opening an email, if we even open it, how simple is the request? Are they sending me this long email and they're feature dumping and they're attaching brochures and it's gonna take a lot of time? Delete, right? So how simple is request? Does it bring me value? Have they demonstrated that they know my needs, right? Number three, is it aligned with my objectives? Is it relevant? And lastly, is it a priority for me? We know why it's a priority for hotels. We want the business. So those are the subconscious boxes we're checking before we decide if we're going to respond to an email. And if we are just smiling and dialing, we're having sales conversations and we need to mm. have business conversations. And so what I want people from a mindset to shift is to think about what problems do you solve? Because what we're selling isn't what the client is buying. So you think of that general contractor that needs rooms for his or her crew. They're not buying rates, dates, and space. They are buying a home away from home. They're buying um, a safe place that has truck parking close to the site. That is what we need to be talking about. And before you hit send on that email, you need to look at it and say, am I adding any more value than what they could be getting from my website? Have yeah. I demonstrated that I know their business? And so go through that filter. How simple does it bring value? Is it aligned with their priorities? And, and is it a priority for them? Right. And that's how you get customers. That's how you get them to respond. Yeah, and I, I love that you can craft the perfect email. And, you know, for me, I always, I, I rush through it and I always get some mistakes. I always, I like, I look at my center and I'm like, oh, I just said that. I should have, I should not have said this one thing or I missed the S off of something or I didn't spell or I didn't add the or whatever. Or, um, you know, one, th one tool I've used is Grammarly. Have you used it? Yes, I love it. I absolutely Great. love it. Grammarly is awesome, guys. If you don't know, go to just type in in Google Grammarly, and what it does, it's it's a uh, app for your desktop. And if you're writing an email, it'll show you where you can improve it, like commas, and if you don't like using, if you don't include does or whatever, it includes it in there and it highlights it, so you can click, right click, or I think left click, and then um, be able to uh, fix that email and make it a perfect email. So there's no spe spelling errors. It's the right verb. It's everything is just it kind of flows and it's caught so many different, even on, um, 
even here on LinkedIn, when I'm just posting something really quickly, like sometimes, some days I don't know what to post on LinkedIn at all. And I'm like, oh, I have to, I have, my goal is to like post three times a day or something. And I'm like, I, I don't know what to talk about today. And then I just throw something up and, and all of a sudden I realize that there's like 15 <laughs> grammar mistakes and Grammarly's helped me. So this is like one thing that could help you when you're in a rush or when you're busy doing other things that can help you kind of just ease your, uh, when you hit that send button, you know you got it right uh, because That's it exactly. highlights your entire email. So tool for me that I love. And one trick for Pesh is I don't put the email address because it's, you know, sometimes your mouse hits send and you're like, oh, crap it's yeah, you know yeah. it's not edited so the last yeah. thing i enter is the email address when i know that my email is perfectly crafted it's been vetted i've probably obsessed too much but it's quality right over quantity and then when i vetted it and i i know that it's the right message and it's relevant then i type in the email address to avoid that so that has saved me many times yeah, it definitely has to be. Um, guys, it, a, lot, a bunch of people are saying they love Grammarly and uh, they use it too. It's a free, You there's a free version yeah. of it, which I use, I don't pay for it. And it's just been amazing where it's changed the way I kind of write and maybe focus on the things that I really mess up on all the time. And it's con it's, it's, it's helped me, right? And I love that you can use these free tools and these tools that are going to really help us. And um, that's how we're going to continue growing. So, all right. So we talked about we talked about email, we talked about the tools, we talked about some sites that we can go on. Uh, any last words of advice? And, I, and, and tons of people are saying they want a part two. So I'm sorry, oh, Tammy, you're gonna, so you're, glad. Gonna have, you're gonna have to come on one more Amazing. time, maybe three more times and we're gonna have to <laughs> <laughs> Well, and Rapesh, you send me your emails anytime and I will proof them and send them to you because I obsess on that stuff. Um, so kind of parting, parting thoughts and recommendations, right, is carve out time every day for sales, whether it's, you know, your full-time job or whether it's one of many things you do, that is how you're going to come out ahead on the other side of this. We're all hitting the reset button and you, along with all of your competitors in your comp set, are going to be at that starting line trying to get out ahead. Don't wait until everything is clear and and we have all the answers now is the time you start working with those market segments engaging those customers and really you know showing who you are now don't wait till we have all the answers and the last part that i think sales and and general managers need to think about is pre-covid what was the mindset around sales you might have been in a really busy hotel that was order taking and I call, you know, I call that farming, which is a really important role, right? But you might have been really busy just managing incoming inquiries and you didn't have a, a, a lot of time to hunt. So there's going to be far more supply than there is demand. And the skill set and the mindset between managing incoming leads, when you manage incoming leads, they're calling you for a reason, they're interested. That's a different sales process than calling someone who's not expecting you, doesn't maybe need what you have, doesn't want what you have. That's a different level of preparation. It's a different skill set and it's a different mindset. So I encourage general managers and directors of sales to look at the skill set and the mindset of their team and get them ready to battle, get them ready to hunt. Because if you rely on farming, you're going to starve to death, right? There's not enough business out there. So sharpen your saw, come out the other side, ready to take a lead in your market. Absolutely. And I wish all of you so much success. You're all, if you know, if you've been hanging in and listening to this conversation, you're already ahead of the game. And I'm certainly happy to go back and answer any questions that we didn't get to today. Yeah. And um, Tammy, this has been amazing. This has been like awesome. I wrote down a whole page full of notes and that I'm going to uh, implement and, and uh, sh continue sharing. And I love that you have so many more insights and, and strategies that your entire team helps people and hotels that don't have a sales team. And so tell us about your book, number one. And then number two is tell us how you help our, us as hotel owners and operators. Yeah, so the book is really this sales by, um, you know, step by step sales playbook that I think you can go back and revisit and you can share with your team. 
It is facilitated, so it's not just um, a PowerPoint deck. I guide you through it. It's a virtual uh, mini book. I think it's you know 45 pages, but it's going to help you shift that mindset from into a hunter mentality, so you can go out there and, and hunt for business. So in terms of our, our company and what we do, we provide remote sales support for hotels all over North America. There are a lot of select service hotels. If you are you know, a Holiday Inn Express, a Comfort, a Best Western, or a Fairfield, you might not need a full-time salesperson, but you need some level of support because you've got a ton of competitors in your backyard. Well, we're that remote solution that's going to hunt and, and do everything we're talking about on this call. The interesting piece is we work with smaller management companies as well. And for those companies that have had to furlough a lot of their staff, we can be a really good bridge to help provide the sales support they need now to ramp up their occupancy so they can start to bring their sales staff back. And um, that's really the value. We're here to make sales accessible and achievable to all hotel owners. Whether you're 80 rooms or 150 rooms, it's possible. And uh, it takes a lot of energy and it can be overwhelming. But we're going to do that for you and take it off your shoulders. This has been an amazing, this has been an amazing hour in 16 minutes. Oh, um, it's been so I, fun. I, Thank you. I said, I said, uh, Tammy, we're going to go on for less than an hour. But we'll just get you in and out. I know you're busy. You're in a hotel room. You have other webinars. You have all those other things you want to do because you're away from your family right now trying to get work done. And, and I've. Uh, we've been over the over the limit, so I really thank you, and I I love My that. My pleasure. People are talking about part twos right now, so we're probably going to have to talk about a part two in the next couple coming weeks because this is only going to get better for all of us. You know, we're all in this together, and uh, I see businesses picking up across the nation and uh, North America, and actually worldwide. I see business picking up everywhere a little bit. It's not going to be overnight where you know you see a flood of you know, the floodgate op opens and then you're you're sold out. That's but right. I love that we're taking these steps and learning, even if you're furloughed, that you can take these steps as you interview for a new position and say, hey, this, this is what I'm going to bring to the table. And, uh, and Tammy, what's the name of your book? People are asking, what's the name and where can they find it? Oh, so it's only, it's we're distributing it. Uh, it's not on Amazon or anything. It's a sales guide and it's called the Gillis Sales Playbook. So we have an online sales community Listen, actually. We have an online sales community that is free for the next 60 days. So if you go to our website, gillissales.com, and you register for our online sales community, um, you will get, it's, it's 60 days free. You're going to get, we're posting leads that we're coming across in different markets. There's a sales playbook there. There's also a sales forum. Post your sales questions. And maybe some of the questions that we didn't get to today, uh, we can go through together, Rapesh, and that could be a good uh, kind of agenda for the next chat, right? The part two. Absolutely. And I have one really hard question. And before we pick the five winners, what's your favorite coffee? My favorite coffee. Wow. You so, you know, what's funny is I know a lot of people say, I'm going to say something very Canadian here. And a lot of people will say Starbucks. Um, I, because I'm Canadian, I drink, I love Tim Hortons. And there's nothing more Canadian than Tim Hortons. Is that what you said? <laughs> yes. Tim Hortons and hockey, right? Those are two very real stereotypes, Canadian stereotypes. I love Tim Hortons. Anytime I'm in- You do as either, well. Oh, anytime I'm in Michigan, because they, have, Tim, they yes. have a few Tim Hortons there, or anywhere north of- uh, uh, North of the equator, no, north. I love. I have to hit up a Timmy's, right? It's that just, is cool. It is awesome. They have the best coffee. And by the way, I even get it. I I get like the hundred pack of the K cups. The K cups, yeah. <laughs> just it's awesome. So, um, hey, I really appreciate this conversation, guys. We're gonna pick now the top five people. And I'm sorry if I didn't pick you. There's, I think we've had over seven, eight hundred comments probably on this on this show now so oh far. Oh my gosh, amazing. And uh, all right, so the first, or the, here are the five winners, guys. If you won, please send me a direct message and I'll connect you with uh, Tammy and we'll congratulate you together because I love that you guys are on this conversation and I love that you're learning, uh, which we all should be doing every single day, just learning one tip, one idea that's going to continue moving us forward in our, 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 uh, our careers, right? And so the first person is Donna Giordana. 
Giordano. Congratulations, Donna. Ashley Katzun. Katz, <laughs> Sorry, I wrote these down and my handwriting is <laughs> awful. Uh, Jared <laughs> Margopoulos. Uh, Margopoulos, sorry, uh, Sue Wagner and Laura mm. Cox. Uh, oh, one more. Can, can I give one more away, please? Yeah, you go ahead. You okay. go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And Jeffrey Weinholt. He, these guys have been amazing just commenting. So, guys, congratulations to Donna. Congratulations. Ashley, That's Sarah, amazing. Laura Cox and Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys, for uh, joining us. And we'll see you next Wednesday at 9 30 a.m. Eastern Time, where Tammy might be on again. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll have you on soon, Tammy, so much. Thank you so Thank much you. for this opportunity to learn, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Rapesh. Take care, everybody. Bye. Have a great day. Thanks. <laughs> All right, guys, what did you think about this conversation? It is amazing that I wrote down like at least – at least 20 or 30 different things. Um, I love that we can all learn this together because uh, when's, w when can you learn like and ask these questions from people that you don't really know or don't have contacts with? So I love that we can get experts into the show, onto the show and learn at least one or two things that can move us up and kind of as we're ramping up, uh, we all continue growing. So guys, thank you so much. And uh, let me put this up. Go to rupesh.co, which is my new website that's coming out it's going to be hospitality courses training resources leadership i'm going to be doing some one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with you so i'm excited about that it's a membership website go to rupesh.co right now and sign up and get notified when we launch i'm going to be launching soon here um the a bunch of people that have been on past shows are going to be doing mini courses for you to come on and learn this one specific thing that can help you. Um, I'm gonna be teaching marketing, customer service, leadership, all these things that I'm passionate about. And it's gonna be a place where you can go to get resources and connect with all these different people that I've been bringing on. I think it's gonna be a great opportunity for all of us to learn and grow together. Guys, thank you so much to, uh, to the other sponsor, smartguests.com, creative hospitality tools. Go to smartguests.com to get your tools as you continue opening up your hotel. Guys, if you, like this conversation, hit the share button right now. And people are like, oh, I missed it. How am I gonna watch the next episode or this past episode? Guys, you can go to my YouTube channel and I don't think I have it listed here. I'm sorry, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. It's uh, youtube.com uh, forward slash Rupesh, R-U-P-E-S-H live. And save, and it's right there. It's youtube.com forward slash Rupesh Live, where you can go back and watch all the past episodes and take a note. And guys, guess what? A lot of people have been asking, like, hey, can you do the show notes or can you do a um, a, a checklist of the things that we talked about? Would this be something that you would be interested in? Because I would have to put a lot of effort in, probably hire some people to do this. Would this be something that you would want as far as after the show? you would get this checklist of the things we talked about. That way you don't have to go back and listen to it and make notes. Would that be useful for you, right? Uh, comment, let me know. And um, today, guess what? Uh, this afternoon, two weeks ago, I had the 50 mark top marketing tools that every hotel owner should or professional should use. Guess what? It's getting published today. So uh, look out for that here on LinkedIn. And I'm super excited to continue sharing these free tools, uh, ideas and strategies with you guys. Thank you so much. I will see you guys next week where I bring on somebody amazing and that's going to share and kind of get us all together and, and grow. I'll see you next week.